Hello, everyone. We are very excited to have you all join us for today's webinar, Optimize Supply Chains Using Machine Learning Superpowers with Tamer and Expiro. In the webinar, we'll go through initial speaker introductions and then go into things that are stalling today's digital transformation, the strategies to realize profits fast, and how you can get started. So with that, I'll hand things over to Chris to introduce himself. Hi, my name is Chris LaCava. I'm a member of the product team at a company called Expiro. Um, my background is in user experience and data visualization. Today, um, myself and my colleague, Brian Thompson, will be talking to you about our supply chain planning solution and how coupled with the power of Tamer, it can bring insights to the manufacturing process. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Thompson. Uh, I also work at Xperia with Chris. Uh, I've spent the last 20-ish years working in uh, high-tech uh, consulting <clears throat> as well as uh, uh, software building. I've played a variety of solution architecture roles as well as product leadership roles and currently work with Chris in supply chain, uh, supporting our supply chain solutions. Hello folks, I'm Sanjay Rajan. I'm part of the Tamer Solutions team. Uh, I too came out of the high-tech industry uh, and defense communications. And then the last 15 years, uh, I've been very involved in building uh, go-to-market solutions for enterprise software, uh, ERP, PLM, MES, IoT, and the such, uh, to help companies uh, go through digital transformations uh, and, and execute Industry 4.0 projects. Uh, at Tamer, I, I lead our verticalization of our uh, manufacturing solutions, and I'm excited to talk to you folks about how you can use uh, Tamer's machine learning to um, adopt it as a competitive advantage for you. Great. So I think we'll just talk about some high-level points around the data landscape and supply chain, and, and Brian and I will um, take you through that journey with some color from Sanjay. And then we'll jump into um, some details around demos and um, some more detailed points around how Tamer and Xperia can help you with your supply chain solution. So uh, just to kick us off with a little bit of background, uh, we um, spent a lot of time talking to supply chain planners and leaders and one of the uh, very common uh, I guess uh, threads that we hear from them uh, is around challenges associated with visibility. Uh, basically, the, the the supply chain leaders and planners um, have a hard time uh, seeing across the supply chain and have a hard time um, uh, gaining insights into uh, the effects um, in the changes um, between supply and demand. And so, uh, for the most part, they're they're not acting very proactively. They're uh, finding themselves in situations where they're really mitigating issues as they arise and, and really not able to uh, plan out as far into the future as they'd like to. And there's a variety of reasons associated with that. Chris will talk to us a little bit about some of those in a minute here. Um, but this this lack of visibility is just a very um, common challenge that we hear people running into. <clears throat> Next slide. Uh, right now, uh, everyone is very, um, you know, uh, very focused on on COVID and the disruption that's happening in COVID. And clearly, it is a kind of a black swan event that we're all uh, uh, dealing with. Um, but this this disruption is not an uncommon uh, occurrence. You know, if we look back even just over the last few years, you know, we see the things that happen with weather, with politics, with um, immigration changes uh, that are just constantly uh, causing a state of disruption on uh, supply chains and that we have to deal with on a on a day-to-day -day basis. Next slide. To, to drive one of these home, I, I was recent uh, recently reading an article uh, about a ventilator manufacturer and and on one side of the equation they were having a hard time identifying raw material shortage and disruption uh, and the, there was a month-to-month -month decline of, of almost a billion dollars as they weren't able to actually manufacture uh, and get out the, the product uh, that they knew they had demand for. 
um, and actually to their advantage. But on the other side of the equation, they were getting a whole new set of, of demand, um, again, based on the environment. So all of a sudden these ventilators are needed and they need to go out and produce them and they could actually offset um, this need. They have this revenue, revenue opportunity to do that, um, but it's very complicated in order to do that. Next slide. If we look at just in, in this case, you know, a ventilator is something that has a mechanical component, it has a uh, high tech component, it has, uh, you know, a computer as part of it. Um, we're talking about 1700 different parts uh, that are that go into some of these ventilators and those are sourced around the world, you know, from hundreds of suppliers. So switching from one um, set of products to another or scaling up one set of products comes with uh, a very significant challenge in being able to see and understand uh, these flows uh, throughout the supply chain. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges, the barriers to, to getting insight and why this, uh, this lack of visibility and ability to proactively plan is so acute. Um, so a lot of it is just the nature of, um, of the supply chain itself. It's a continuum of many different data points through many different things from uh, supplier and pricing to demand forecasting all the way through um, various phases of the manufacturing process and distribution process. Um, it's, it's very distributed. There's a ton of data in a lot of systems. Some of those systems are highly latent. Some of them are really old and can't talk to other systems. And a lot of them have data that is duplicated in multiple places with other systems and or just bad, bad data, meaning the, the quality of the data is bad. And so if you, if you look at um, trying to build a system of visibility and then eventually uh, decision support to outcome, you realize that um, you know, the, if it's garbage in, a lot of times those, those, those insights are going to be um, less than um, insightful and, the, and it's gonna be really hard to get great outcomes if you can't, if you can't really get um, information that you can trust. So, um, so that's, that, that's kind of the state of a lot of the systems that feed um, decision support and supply chain. Um, and, and what do we mean by, by bad data? We mean duplicate data, we mean misclassified or unorganized data disconnected data. So we're looking at um, a, a web of information, highly connected over um, you know, multiple times and regions and, and everything else. If that data is not connected, we're not getting a holistic view. Um, and then sometimes it's just a formatting issue. You know, it's hard to line things up and, and, and categorize them if, um, if you're constantly having to convert to formats. Um, and if data comes in the system, poor quality, it's really hard to, uh, to track it down within, within a, a system that delivers insights. Really, if you can get it at the source and clean it and unify it and organize it, then everything downstream from that can be trusted. And ultimately, it's a user experience issue. You want them to be able to trust those insights and, 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 and work through decisions to get better outcomes um, with confidence. And so how does Tamer plug into this system? Um, well, uh, Sanjay will we'll talk in detail about this, but um, it's, it's a solution that, that takes basically something that a, that a human couldn't do manually and um, uses the power of machine learning to be able to categorize and build a, a, a sustainable um, foundational master data set. From there, we can start to see things holistically. Once we can see things holistically, we can act on them proactively. Um, the, the issues and the bottlenecks in the supply chain start to, start to um, become evident, and we'll show um, some examples of that and solutions that we've built. Um, and then ultimately, that supports um, better decisions and um, ultimately leads to better outcomes. So just digging a little bit into those challenges, um, these are you know top five challenges that 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 we see a lot within supply chains, specifically uh, around planning and the manufacturing process. Uh, the data is siloed. It's it's across multiple systems, ERP systems, spreadsheets, uh, computers under someone's desk, not connected to the internet. 
um, we need to take that and stitch it together into a fabric that we can then um, build some insights off of. Um, there's no end-to-end -end visibility. It goes hand-in-hand -hand with that siloed data, but you don't know things entering to, into the supply chain, how they're connected to things downstream and vice versa. It's hard to track cause and effect. It's hard to be able to find root cause problems. And that goes to the third uh, issue here. Um, really, it's hard to build a remediation strategy proactively you know, unless you know what the root causes are. Um, by the same token, um, things tend to snowball because it's a distributed set of, of steps within a supply chain. So if you have uh, a, a relatively mild disruption on, on the supplier side of the supply chain, downstream when you want to bring um, a product to market that relies on that on, on that um, raw material or good from, from the supplier, it may be a big problem by the time it gets downstream because schedules slip progressively and it becomes exponential. And to be able to understand that proactively in planning um, is, is a huge challenge. But um, once you can overcome that challenge, a lot of things clear up. Um, and, and that gets to the, the fourth part, which is real-time insights. Uh, a lot of these bottled up systems are in old optimization engines. They take a long time to run. Um, it's hard to see things in real time, especially when you're trying to look at it across regions. You're trying to look at it um, well into the future. You're doing a rough cut plan, for example, and your, plan your planning horizon is seasonal, 36 months out. Uh, really hard to get good signals and then be able to adjust in real time. Um, and that, that leads into the fifth point, which is basically um, the models that are built in so, into some of these legacy systems are very powerful, but they're black boxed. And a lot of the variables that are built into these optimizations um, are no longer relevant or out of date. And it's really hard to, uh, to get a responsive system when the underlying forecasting models um, and analytics are static and they're not responding to a constant stream of of categorized and recategorized data. And so let's talk a little bit about the solution to that problem set. Uh, our system itself, Radiant Path, is the, is the planning tool that we're going to be talking about today, um, is used in, vari in various settings in manufacturing. Um, it basically looks at um, the supplier part of the supply chain all the way through the manufacturing process to, um, to uh, the distribution point to, to basically get materials at the right place at the right time and be able to enable the planner not only to schedule uh, how material flows through the various phases of the supply chain from supplier through manufacturing to, to delivery, but also make sure that there is adequate resources, the machinery and the factories, the people are there and have the right amount of capacity to turn um, those components into the next step of that phase and ultimately to a finished good. So uh, this is a, um, a, a use case that uh, came up rather recently. It's COVID-19 related. Uh, one of our customers is a major uh, crop science manufacturer, uh, a global supply chain that they're trying to manage across um, the entire world. Uh, when COVID-19 really hit, they realized pretty, pretty soon that their um, their supply chain was going to be disrupted at, at, at the supplier level. They were getting a lot of raw material from Asia. Um, and what they didn't know um, offhand is how that was going to affect downstream um, in, the, in the planning cycle for the next 36 months. So they wanted to basically light the state of the state up and see how disruption in Asia was going to um, influence how they were going to deliver fertilizers and pesticides for, uh, for, for the next 36 months. And so they used our tool, uh, um, Radiant Path, to light that up. Now, this assumes that the data that they were pulling into the system was collated and cleaned. Um, that is no small feat. Um, it was distributed across multiple um, ERP systems. And therefore, there was a lot of entity resolution that needed to be done, and there were a lot of things that needed to, to line up to be able to get that holistic view to have immediate uh, action. So uh, Sanjay will talk a little bit more about that, but that's, um, that is where Tamer plugs in um, and is able to 
collate across all of those siloed systems and be able to get a holistic view of, um, of what's going on. Um, another use case I want to talk about very quickly, and then we'll jump into a demo, is for a major ship builder. Uh, this, uh, this was tracking material across um, uh, basically the, the process of building a ship from, um, from raw steel all the way to the, the ship leaving um, uh, the, the shipyard and, and, and being delivered to, uh, to the end customer. Um, this is all about uh, managing material in a, in, in a lean way, but in a proactive way as well. Um, even the, the most ubiquitous material on, on a ship, which is steel, raw material has a lot of pricing volatility. Um, you obviously don't want to run out of it when you're, when you're building a ship, so you don't want to stay too lean but you also don't want to keep a lot of it on hand. It has a shelf life, it rusts, um, as well as the fact that the pricing is so volatile that it may be uh, more expensive to keep a lot of it on hand than it is to, um, to, to uh, just in time order. But uh, you want to be able to have options there. You want to, you want to be able to, um, to, to be able to, uh, uh, to, to have insight into your supplier network as well as different components that you may have in and be able to, to swap things out for that you really need a handle on your data it has to be highly categorized and you have to be able to discern what if parts are in fact from the same manufacturer or we're talking about parts that can be substituted or we're talking about discrete parts so that master set of data around bill of materials is key to be able, being able to get a handle on, on material throw, uh, flow and getting a healthy flow through the manufacturing process. So with that, I'm going to do a quick demo, show you some screens about some of the things that we've talked about uh, leading up to the use cases and then through the use cases. I'm going to be showing our Radiant Path tool and then I'm going to hand it over to Sanjay and he's going to um, go through how, how, how Tamer can actually enable a solution like this. So generally with, the, with any kind of analytics-based tool, we give people something familiar. Um, this may uh, deceptively look like a business intelligence tool with, with standard char uh, bar charts on it. And in fact, that was the point we wanted to give um, supply chain planners something that they're used to looking at so we could go through a set of these screens and we can say well i want to do some some demand planning some perspective forward looking demand planning so my persona going through this is basically a uh, a regional or a global supply chain uh planner and what i'm trying to do is look forward uh, and a certain planning time horizon, we'll say it's uh, 18 to 36 months, and I wanna see the feasibility of my plan at a high level. So this basically anchors me. It, it shows me the things that I'm used to looking at uh, in other systems, and I can easily discern what this, what this um, type of information is. Um, and I can look at just very high level pieces of information. What does my demand forecast look like? How does that relate to units needed over the time horizon that I'm looking at? Um, what does the bottom line look like for that? Um, it also gives me recommendations of some remediations. It gives me some high level uh, sets of KPIs. So I can look at these charts and say, well, how does this affect um, my manufacturing process? Meaning how much demand am I not going to meet with this current plan? Is my resource um, portfolio balanced to be able to deliver this? Am I going to um, either slip a schedule or have to have to uh, deliver less product because I have inventory imbalances throughout the phases of the supply chain? Um, I can isolate different phases of the supply chain, so I can go from source all the way to distribution, or I can limit those. I also have a time horizon here, so if I'm looking at demand over time forward projecting now, this is my plan. So these are my forecasts. I can say, how does my demand relate to my utilization of the resources that have to meet that demand with the inventory? And I can line those different uh, values up. Um, so this will start to tell me what's at risk. 
if I want to look at the flow help, I can see what parameters I want to build a composite score. So if I'm looking at flow health across the supply chain, but I'm really, uh, I really want to zero in on suppliers or inventory um, or maybe just utilization, I can start to configure that in a way that um, will reflect more of the, the risk profile that I want to, I want to project on to gain some kind of health metric. So this is all pretty straightforward, but again, this presupposes that the data is connected, clean, collated, and, and categorized in a way that we can start to get these high-level insights. But where the, the power really comes in is when we start to drill in and we say, okay, so for a given finished good, what does my demand and inventory profile look like? What does the bill of materials look like to build that? So this is aggregating um, different components that, that are built to sub-assemblies. Those, those assemblies are built to assemblies. And then they, they eventually are built up to the finished good, the SKU that goes to the market. Uh, the color here is showing what the relative health of those components are. Now, if I want to see that over a period of time, I can basically say, well, I have a heavy period here of demand. What does that look like? And now I start to see, well, I have some serious inventory issues um, within the bill of materials as this, as this finished good is being constructed and brought to market. Now I can start to look in and see what those demand versus coverage curves look like. And this is at a point where I can get recommendations to swap that component. Again, if the master data supports it, I can swap the component um, and see what the ramification of that is. I can also look at uh, the other side of the equation, which is what do my resources look like um, building this? So what I'm going to do is order this by factory location. And now I start to see the health of my resource capacity. Each of these little dots here show resources. And over time, I can see if I have resourcing issues. Looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go back to my bill of materials. I'm going to show one more thing here. If I tag one of these things and say, this is interesting, but I want to see the underlying data that's driving this. Now I, I can start to traverse that data set. And I can see what component is this connected to? Uh, what other suppliers is, is this connected to? What locations, what factories produce this? So uh, what is the recipe that drives this? And this will start to tell me where my, my opportunities are to substitute this with other components, or if an, another component is in fact uh, the one that's, that's presupposed to be um, the, the most important. So this is uh, just a high level demo of how we can start to walk through this data and provide uh, specific insights into some of the things that we talked about around uh, supply chain planning. And with that, Sanjay, I'm gonna kick it over to you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, just, I'll just confirm if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, so what you saw there was, was very intuitive ways to take your data and convert it into uh, into fantastic outcomes uh, through Xperia, right? Uh, but as as the theme here is um, on the left hand side in this in this crossing this chasm is really the the problem, right? Which is how do I start with kind of you know the, the excuse usually from what we hear from uh, from our prospects and customers, and it's pretty legitimate is to say this is fantastic, this is great, but we are not ready, right? We are not worthy of this because you are not you know, we have too many ERP systems, our business units have, are siloed. Um, we, you know, unless we do such a project at a global level, it, it doesn't have the return on investment, things like that, right? And um, however, digital transformation projects continue, right? And uh, there's, a, there's a very nice Gartner study that kind of captures this that says, most of the problem occurs in the, in the first part of that project, right, of that transformation where you're attempting to take your bad data quote unquote and then converting it into useful master data where you can then start to drive analytics and and uh, fantastic solutions like Xperia, right um 
And so that's where Tamer comes in, right? I mean, it really tries to accelerate that front end of those projects and prevents you from getting stalled in those projects so that you can use, um, use these downstream tools, right? Uh, that said, um, and we, we, what we do very well is bridge that gap, right? Between that bad data and the analytical outcome, uh, we have done it for customers like Scotiabank, GSK, Toyota, across a, a lot of verticals, right? At a at a at a very at an enterprise scale, um, starting with one particular entity and then expanding it to them using Tamer as a solution that they then use to clean up uh, pretty much all of their bad data, right? And um, the the big advantage that Tamer has is using using machine learning to do this, right? Um, so if in, in a typical project, uh, and your your mileage may vary, but most of the times, um, you know, you have a lot of key business users, data scientists, and data engineers who are supposed to be looking at how can we create better insights and how we can operationalize it um, from from good data into into good outcomes. But they end up spending most of their time up here on the left, where they are preparing that data, right? Uh, and what machine learning does is shifts that thing over on its head, right? Machine learning comes in and think of it as the bulldozer that says, look, I'll do all the heavy lifting and I'll do it really fast, right? Teach me a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll take a, a peek at a demo here in a, in a, in a short while. And, uh, you know, what machine learning, what Tamer says is, uh, have your business experts, a few of them, teach me a little bit about the data and then I'll learn really fast from it and then I'll do all of that heavy lifting while your business users and data scientists are really focused on driving those good outcomes, right? You want your planners, you want your data scientists, you want your data engineers and your business users more on the Xperia tool, right? That's where they need to be because that's where they're operationalizing it. If they're sitting there on Excel spreadsheets and data lakes and, and playing around with that, um, then you're just, just letting a, a great opportunity go by, right? So that's the key right here. Um, What's the difference with Tamer? I mean, some of you uh, watching this webinar may absolutely be in the situation, which is in the older approach where where things are very staticky, right? I mean, you know, go get business input, figure out each um, data set, figure out the schema, write out a catalog, right? And then get into this iterative process where you're writing business rules, right? Rules to distinguish, you know, how do we clean up suppliers, rules to rules on our parts, you know, rules on our customers. And, and that seems to go okay initially, except when you have to start iterating, right? When your source data changes, then again, you have to re-verify the rules, go back to the business users, and, and hopefully through all of this process, some of your key resources on the business side, on the IT side, uh, are still around, right? I mean, you know, they haven't, they haven't left for another opportunity or they haven't gone and uh, are doing something else, right? So a lot of that knowledge is trapped in resources in here. And this, you know, projects, digital transformation projects that are dependent on, on prepping data um, can take years um, to come to fruition. While Tamer, what we do really is convert that down to weeks or, or uh, even days in terms of cleaning data, right? Why? Because we use the, um, you know, patented kind of Tamer award-winning platform and combine, consolidate, and categorize that data very quickly for you. So from a from a left to right, what it looks when you have Tamer in play is that irrespective of whatever data volume you have and the, the velocity of that data, and more importantly, the variety of that data, right, coming from various systems, ERP, CRM, you know, uh, MES systems, IoT data, whatever they are, throw it at Tamer, allow, teach Tamer a little bit, allow it to kind of understand, profile the data, and what Tamer does is literally you know, wash, dry, and fold your clothes, right? Pretty much that's what it does to data. Uh, it doesn't do it without human help. There's a human element to this, which we'll talk about. But what it really then says is, is all of those fantastic um, um, demo that you saw from Xperio, which relied on knowing what your parts exactly are, right? Knowing who your suppliers are, where they exactly are, right? How much am I spending with everybody? Who's my customer? So mastering all this data, you're doing it today, you're doing your best to keep it uh, up to snuff, but, but Tamer comes and does that transformational um, kind of change to that data. And what we output out of Tamer is exactly what Xperia wants, right? Analytic ready data sets. And when we mean analytic ready, it means just pull it in and start driving your analytics. 
So let's take a, it's a little bit of a busy slide. I'll take a minute to go over this, um, um, just as, as what is Tamer in action before I show you uh, the product itself, right? So let's take, let's take like parts and suppliers, for example, as entities, right? Um, let's take um, kind of either it's a part or a supplier, you have, what you want to do is really, you're looking to unify the data. So let's say you have two ERP systems, you have a CRM system, you have a bunch of Excel spreadsheets, and there's some of that data from a from an acquisition or a merger that came in and it's in a data lake, right? So it's not uncommon for data to be spread. But if you take a unified field like name of a part or, or a description of a part or a name of a, of a supplier, what Tamer does is it looks at all of these data sets, looks at the schema, profiles it, and uses machine learning with a little bit of human help to quickly unify across all of these data sets a standard target schema. So the, 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 the process starts there where we apply machine learning to quickly unify from a column level all of these attributes <clears throat> and come up with a destination schema, right? While we do that, we can also transform and enrich the data, right? So things like basic things like even phone numbers, zip codes, uh, you know, part numbering schemes, whatever it is that you have, attributes, we can start transforming that data into a very, very standard format that goes across your global inventory or your global suppliers, right? We can also use enrichment data, right? DNB data, Thomson and Reuters, um, you know, any kind of external data, not just internal, but take on even external syndicated data or publicly available data, use that as signals to kind of clean and enrich this information, right? And then once we enrich this and prepare it, then we go through a couple of things, right? This is where the human comes in, right? So for example, let's say you have a bunch of suppliers, you have a whole bunch of suppliers and you have duplicates in them and you need to start mastering it and resolve your suppliers into a single source of truth. What Tamer does is it profiles the data and here is where the Tamer patent kicks in and, and kind of the, the, the secret recipe here is Tamer knows which questions to ask, right? It says, are these two suppliers the same, right? It pulls these records and, and pulls up pairs of records and all it wants a business user to do is simply answer yes or no, right? Is Harris Com Div the same as Harris Company and is it the same address? Yes, no. Well, this looks yes, so I may answer yes. And the minute you say yes or no, Tamer extrapolates that information and applies it across tens of thousands of records immediately, thus extrapolating what's in a, what's in a business user's brain into, into, the, into the Tamer model. <clears throat> Same thing for a part, right? It pulls up and pulls and, and knows which questions to ask, and that's the secret recipe. Finding out, and in this case, it says, is this half inch anchor bolt the same as this galvanized bolt here? In this case, uh, a user may have to look up another piece of information or look up a sheet, but whatever it is, after they know the answer, just come back and press yes or no, and it again extrapolates that information. And out of that, what do you get? you get what are called golden records, right? Which are these single sources of truth, whether they are parts or suppliers, that gives you the best, cleanest representation of that entity. This is now ready to be put into an analytic um, um, solution like uh, Xperia, <clears throat> right? One last thing in here, interesting is, once you build your golden records, you can even use them to remediate your source, right? So you can go back to a CRM system or a ERP system, and the next new part or supplier that you create there, you, you can, Tamer can immediately tell you if you're creating a duplicate or is it a net new that it needs to create, right? So you can even use that um, record of source of truth that you've created to make sure that you're not further creating duplicates or, uh, or, or messing up your data any further. So um, it, it's all done through a, a, a very intuitive workflow that I'll show you, but in a sense, um, it's pretty straightforward, simple, and very powerful um, to go from bad data to good data. Okay. <clears throat> um, in terms of, so how do we apply this, right? I mean, you know, the, the typical use cases that we apply this to are, are some of the toughest data challenges in manufacturing around supply chain planning, right? Mastering parts and suppliers, um, procurement and spend analytics, categorizing global spend, or legacy system uh, consolidations, right? Where you take multiple ERP systems or uh, you know MES systems, whatever they are, and start consolidating them, right? So projects like these are exactly where Tamer is used. 
And what I want to show you is, is three outcomes from Tamer, a couple of examples, and then run through a quick demo of the workflow of how you would actually do it in Tamer. Okay. So let's take the first one, right? Uh, we saw this major shipbuilder example that, uh, ex uh, that Brian and Chris showed, where you're trying to match supply and demand, and you're taking it for granted that your parts inventory, your suppliers are all clean, right? Any issues there with that data is just going to give you bad insights, right? So here you see Tamer took a, um, uh, you know, more than <clears throat> half a million parts and deduplicated them into a, like almost a 20% reduction in kind of the kind of the parts um, uh, that you carry, right? In terms of in terms of part numbers, right? And and for any given part, so take this programmable relay for example. Tamer found that within four ERP systems, that this same part has nine instances in there. And it's called different things. It's described differently. It even has price variation, right? It found a minimum price and a maximum price and an average price and even a potential savings, right? You're knowing how much inventory you carry, applying the basic math. Tamer is saying, hey, you have, you have about 800 to 900K of savings here if you're able to drive cost down to an average price here, right? And it actually shows you which are those parts that are exact duplicates and shows you where they are. <clears throat> you can even put some enrichment data in there, right? And um, which could be COVID-19 data, like Chris and Brian showed, and actually even use Expedo to say, where is that inventory trapped? Where are my exact duplicates sitting in which warehouse, which exact site or which vendor managed inventory or which supplier factory, right? down to that level as long as you uh, as long as you have all that raw information to throw into tamer and process it another example here we looked at parts now let's look at suppliers right if your supplier data looks like this at a global level where take a couple of these suppliers kingfast and macronics you have five or six ways that you are representing kingfast you have a whole bunch of different addresses and the question here is can I have a clean master level account and a site level clean representation of my suppliers? And the answer is yes. Put it through Tamer, train it. And what Tamer outputs is says, here is the master level account and here are eight unique sites for that same Macronics Corporation. Same way, Kingfast. Here is the master account. Here are six unique sites. And how did it find it? It took some help from a human in terms of training but then it went and profiled all this data, applied machine learning, and then clustered or, or um, uh, you know, pulled all of these together into a cluster and then made a data uh, analytics ready data set that can then be fed, right? You can even add to this data set risk data, right? So it may be COVID data, it may be supplier balance sheets, it could be weather, right? Whatever it is, all of those external data can be now fed into it. And now that you have mastered at a site level, you can say, hey, there are three sites from whom I'm sourcing which are at a higher risk than these other five sites of the same supplier um, where it's lower risk to source now, right? And so this is where, again, you can take internal data, external data, and really drive analytic ready data sets you know, using Tamer machine learning, right? One last example, and then a quick demo. Um, granular view of spend right so we this is one of our most popular use cases where whether it's indirect or direct spend or overall spend what what our customers want is a very granular granular view of where are we doing where are we spending our money and who are we spending with it especially around tail spend right so we have taken data sets where spend is unclassified most of it is unclassified or some of it is incorrectly classified you throw all these PO transactions and invoice transactions just as they are into Tamer, right? Coming from maybe multiple data sets, right? And what Tamer does is classifies them to a taxonomy. So for example, here, Tamer took all the tail spend and take a category like office supplies and Tamer took a little bit of training from, from a human or a set of humans, business experts, and said, here is exactly down to a level four of taxonomy that I can tell you exactly what that spend is categorized and who are your suppliers you're spending that tail spend with. So if you if if 15, 20, 30% of your spend is tail spend, 
almost always we can take at least 15% of that spend, which could be tens of millions of dollars and save that very quickly through cost reduction, supplier consolidation expenses. With that, let me give you a real quick view of, of uh, Tamer, right, uh, in action with a couple of examples. So here um, is, a, is a Tamer uh, project page, and you can see here we are running multiple projects, right? We are mastering customers, we are mastering parts, we are classifying our spend, and we are even mastering our suppliers, right? And the nice thing about it, about Tamer is that you have you can run multiple projects simultaneously, and all of them have very, very intuitive workflows that you can use to, uh, to clean up your data. Let's just go into a parts mastering example. This is the one uh, where we are, we are taking over half a million parts and figuring out where we have alternates, duplicates, and where are our opportunities to save. And you can see here that after a few rounds of training, Tamer has reduced that to just over 300,000 parts, right? Hey, it's not 500,000 unique parts. You really have 300,000 unique parts. And Tamer did it by asking 272 questions, right? And each question is, like I said, a yes or no answer, right? Are these two parts similar? Yes or no. And by just answering, spending a few hours, maybe a day, a couple of days of training of Tamer, you can achieve these uh, real reductions. The input are just ERP inputs, right? Don't do anything to that data, just throw it in. And the data may look like this, right? Where you have a lot of nulls, you have columns, names that no one can decipher what they are. Um, it has data, um, typically ERP data, right? You take all of those data sets, throw it into Tamer, and what Tamer does is unifies all that schema into a single schema, and then gives you answers that looks like this. Here is how uh, analytic-ready data set looks, right? On the Tamer end, what Tamer did is looked at those half a million parts and it created clusters. Each of this is a cluster of similar or duplicate parts, right? So here is that same programmable relay, nine parts, they are represented nine different times in multiple ERP systems, called different things, described differently. But what did Tamer do? It looked at all of the columns, including price, material, voltage, amperage, whatever the attributes are, it looked at everything and came up with these clusters, which is fantastic because now I have a single ID that I can now give to Expedo and say, here is the single best representation of that part. And when you match supply and demand or do any analysis or anything like that, Tamer can always tell you, here is all the inventory that looks exactly the same, or here are all the suppliers that are the same, and here is the best single representation of that information that you can use for analytics, right? The last part of this and the magic really is, how did we do that, right? How did we go from these disparate data sets to Tamer clustering this information so nicely? It did it with this workflow where Tamer generates a whole bunch of questions, right? And so you can assign these questions, yes, no questions to your team members, let's say five business experts and say, hey, please log into Tamer with your ID password and open up your assignments and look at your um, open assignments and answer these questions. So today in this round of training, I have three questions to answer that Tamer said, hey, if you answer this, it's gonna help me tune that model and, and get rid of duplication and suggest alternates. What do these questions look like? I can just select a question and it's as simple as this screen, that's it. No spreadsheets, no, color coding uh, into spreadsheets and emails and all of this stuff, right? Tamer took two records. Here is one part transposed vertically. And it says this magnetic motor with this price and this description, is it the same as this one? One is from Honeywell, it appears, and another is from Siemens. I have to look at it and Tamer has already color coded for me all the exact fields, right? Here is all the blues are exact fields. And all the user has to do is, is this the same? or is it not? And you can see here, Tame is already learning, right? After a couple of rounds, it says, hey, I think this is a very high match. What do you think? And all you have to do is respond, right? And just to show how it, you know, um, good Tamer is, even after a very uh, couple of rounds is, take this part. 
exact same description 10 inch steel carriage bolt exact same supplier even the commodity code is same uh, dimensional information is same but tamer says this is not a match why because tamer learned that finish and material are important right so this is galvanized versus plain steel versus alloy steel and tamer says i know that these attributes are all important and they may be hidden or they may be you know in 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 the 35th and the 36th column but i know how to look for it and i know how to predict these things right so it learns quickly from these yes no answers and gives you um, analytic ready um, data sets okay. so with that um, i will come back to the presentation here and that exactly kind of is the way tamer works to generate Kind of analytical ready outcomes like this and then give it to uh, fantastic solutions ex like Expedo, where now if you put that into your insights and if you're if you're a supply chain planner or a procurement person or a manufacturing engineer you're looking at data and analytics that's absolutely accurate so um with that one of the um, things that with from Expedia and tamer is is the question to say how do we get started right how do we go through this journey how do we accelerate to our good outcomes maybe you have ongoing projects that are going that are a little stalled uh, maybe you started a project you've had some outcome but it is not what was stated originally three months ago or six months ago or a year ago where you wanted to start and here is an opportunity for you to get some real innovative uh, state-of-the-art technology into your company uh, in, a, in at least a small way to get it started right um, so one of the things that we are offering here for folks on this webinar and uh, encourage you to take advantage of the uh, early birds who, who want to sign up for it is uh, we'd love to do a, a two-week sprint as we call it it could take two weeks two to three weeks to help unlock insights out of your bad data right so the offer really is that um, we'll you know uh, raise your hand let us know that you're interested we'll get on with you and we'll do us a, a quick discovery meeting let's pick a sample problem right it could be around supply chain it could be around spend it can be around your customers uh, pick a challenging problem that's worth solving that is stymied because of of data that is just suspect that you're not able to get your hands around and and you're you're a little tired of boring descriptive analytics that tell you that you have a problem but they don't tell you how to solve it right um, so if you're stuck anywhere in that in that journey we'd love to take a problem take it off your hands take a sample of your data and we'll master it we'll show you irrefutable good outcomes as long as they exist in that data and not only that we'll work with you within in those couple of weeks and help you build a business case with tangible roi so we'll give you your data back in the form of analytics uh, with a before to after picture with ROI and uh, it'll be a fun exercise for, uh, for you all to work with us and uh, you know get a taste for really state-of-the-art technology uh, and uh, um, you know, really, really see how you know kind of you can unlock a lot of that value that is today trapped in your uh, in your uh, data okay with that uh, Brian Chris do you want to add anything to this um, and if there are any questions, answers, we can get into the interactive uh, side of the of the program. Uh, the only thing that I would add is that um, our solutions uh, fit within the eco the existing ecosystem of other systems. So we don't displace other systems. Um, so we can get up and running um, with a discovery um, sprint very quickly um, and move into pilot. Uh, or poor production. That's that's um, what we're optimized to do, and, um, and 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 we're ready to move fast. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Next slide, Sanjay. Great. So we've had a few submitted questions before the webinar. The the first one is. How is what you showed different than other current BI tools that I have? Uh, this is Chris, I'll, I'll field that one. <clears throat> On the Xperio side, um, the Radiant Path product is in, has in fact elements of business intelligence, but what it's really uh, built for is decision support through execution. And so what we wanna do is uh, basically drop directly into the workflow of a planner and show them um, 
things in a way that they can understand uh, to be able to pinpoint bottlenecks within that connected data and basically um, perform active scenarios, what if scenarios, to be able to mitigate um, and remediate issues that they may find proactively. And uh, that goes beyond um, a, a general business intelligence suite, although it can work in harmony with those as well. Great, Great answer, Chris, thank you. Thank you. So the second question we have here is, would this replace an existing supply chain management system like SAP? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll fill that one again. Um, I mentioned this before, but it 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 falls into the general eco ecosystem. So it illuminates things within other systems um, through through coordination and in connectivity of the data that lives in those 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 systems. So it doesn't displace anything. Um, it, it only augments or brings um, more insight into the data that you already have, uh, including SAP. Great, thanks for the clarification on that. Sure. All right, next one we have here is what data do we need to have in order to use Tamer and Expiro? And are there any restrictions on the types of data that Tamer and Expiro can handle? Yeah, I can get started with that. I mean, uh, the answer is there is literally no restrictions to uh, to to the to the volume of data, to the variety of data, to the type of data that you put into Tamer. The only thing is is we deal with structured and semi-structured data. Um, so anything that's coming from your enterprise applications, ERP systems, CRMs, procure-to-pay systems, whatever there are, um, just don't change anything. Just give it to us. You don't need to prep anything. You don't need to profile anything. Um, literally just you know in most cases in many cases we you know customers don't don't um, want us pulling it out of the source itself they probably put it into a data lake or a, or a, or a landing zone uh, that said we can grab it out of data lakes landing zones or we grab it out of sources and off we go so there is pretty much no restriction to it uh, the the fantastic thing about Tamer is is the scalability right and the agility which means not only are there no restrictions to um, to kind of the number of data sources and the amount of data that you want to throw into Tamer, it there is no restriction going forward to, which means that when you now have you do a merger or an acquisition or you buy another enterprise application, that data source gets added. It pretty much with almost very little intervention can get added to that pipeline and that data is then again fed into the model. So that's very agile and scalable from that standpoint that once you establish this pipeline of ingestion, um, Tamer can continuously curate it irrespective of what is the changes in the source data. And this is Chris, I'll field the question on the Xperia side. Um, similar answer, uh, our system is very flexible. Uh, what we would do within that that um, discovery period is map out um, the capacity models as well as the material models. A lot of that can be ascertained from systems of record um, um, from the get-go, um, such as material inventory management and SAP, uh, APO systems for plans and SAP, and various other ERP systems. Um, so that's... Um, a relatively well-known and a, a, a pretty easy integration point. Having said that, um, categorizing that data and the um, the adaptive maintenance of that data that Tamer provides makes our job a lot easier and much more rich and insightful when um, when when it's coupled with the power of the types of tools that we talked about today. Great. Um, thank you both for that. The next question we have is, <clears throat> are Tamer and Xperio services or products? And how self-sufficient can I be as a customer using both? Yeah, that's a that's a very interesting question. And, and it's a good question in the sense of how you want to visualize uh, Tamer and Xperio, actually. Um, Tamer is a product, uh, and our model is to drive self-sufficiency, right? So um, it initially, in your first project, it will come with some services because we'll need to teach you how to fish, right? But our intent is completely to let you fish um, yourself, right? And, and self-sufficiently serve yourself. So a typical project uh, um, or, or a, uh, a model would be where uh, we pick the first problem, 
um, and start cleaning the data for that first problem and start driving it towards analytical outcomes. But during that process of setting up that first project, we teach you the Tamer platform, we teach you the workflow, we enable you so that when you go to the next entity, so let's say you started with parts, then you went to suppliers, then you went to spend, then you went to customers. After the second project on, you're really um, self-sufficiently um, uh, navigating it and, and machine learning has then become part of the very fabric of how you, uh, of, of your data journey and of your digital transformation. And on the Xperia side, uh, a relatively same answer. Our, our goal is self-sufficiency on a, on a product-based solution, which is the one that I demoed today, Radiant Path. Now, having said that, user experience and the nuances of everyone's supply chains uh, and, their, and how they manifest within their organization is very important to us. So we do want to custom fit that to some degree when necessary. Um, so there is a period of implementation but we don't want to linger there, obviously, and self-sufficiency uh, for our customers is what is what our goal is. Thank you. And the last question we have is, what is a typical engagement model for Tamer and Xperio, and how long does it typically take to implement? Um, I can go first again. Um, yeah, I mean, from a from an engagement model, it. Uh, the the mo engagement model is pretty much standard. Um, the length of engagement would depend on the problem that we are trying to solve, right? So I'll use an example. So for example, if you're doing supplier mastering or customer mastering or a mastering project, um, you know it shouldn't take more than a couple of months, two to three months, to get um, to analytic ready data sets that you can then start driving analytics from. Uh, and the the uh, you know, defining the scope of the problem, understanding what's the data pipeline that has to be established is critical, right? Knowing what, where your data is uh, and how often that data changes uh, and where do we need to uh, drop off that data is key, right? To understanding that pipe. Um, and the second important part of that engagement is really that training and that enablement we do where we teach you essentially how um, Tamer's workflow and uh, um, you know uh, solution platform works um, and part of that initially before we start that engagement is a very strong commitment from from you the customer to to provide kind of that human training right if at all anything in our engagement model what what tends to sometime um, you know kind of create a blip is the fact that Tamer is not just a, a machine learning platform that you just put it in there and it does everything magically. It does a lot of things magically, but one of the things it needs is initially that training that subject matter experts provide. So identifying that problem and who are the handful of people who understand that problem really well and can teach Tamer for the initial piece of that project is key. Once we secure those resources and understand the IT landscape, um, the rest of it goes very, very smoothly. Um, and then, uh, you know, once we finish the first project, like I said, subsequent engagements are a little different, right? It's it's on a need to need to know basis that you as a customer say, hey, I'm starting my second project. I understand all of this, but here I need some help. Great, Tamer comes there and helps you. So it's a um, length of projects are usually within one quarter. But within, we'd love to see results um, and focused and, and take bite-sized projects where you can have within three to four months um, analytical ready results. Right. And on the Xperia side for the, for the Radiant Path planning solution, um, we generally uh, run a two-week discovery assessment just to find out the landscape of the particular um, ecosystem of, of systems that we're, we're, we're evaluating to get data into the system. Um, we use a pilot period that could be very brief or it could be longer depending on the engagement, but generally we like to um, concentrate the pilot uh, with real data, with real users on a subset of, of a portion of the supply chain. That could be a specific phase, it could be a specific location or region, um, it could be a subset of a group. Once we um, understand um, that uh, some of the, the, the ways to implement that within the pilot, um, getting water to flow through the pipe, so to speak, and we're confident about the insights we're seeing, 
we create a strategy to extend the scope uh, and breadth of of the of the system, um, and that could be as quickly as um, as four weeks from the assessment. Um, but generally, it takes a quarter or so, um, similar to um, the description that Sanjay gave for Tama. Um, right. I'll just add one other thought in here. Um, in every case, when we engage with a customer, um, before we start a project, by that time, we have already confirmed a business value, right? Um, because Tamer is a product, we don't need to make a research project out of it. We have already most likely taken a sample of your data. Uh, we have analyzed it as a, as a group. We have together as a team. We have already seen uh, examples of positive outcomes, right? We are very confident that this works, right? We've gone through and checked a lot of boxes before we start an engagement. And that's exactly kind of this two week sprint concept, right? Either it's a, it's a short sprint or it's maybe a slightly longer uh, uh, engagement, but we do a lot of uh, confirmation um, that the, the value can be unlocked. And uh, once we do an engagement like that, it actually sets the stage for Expiro really well because um, you know through that discovery process um, and and that initial engagement we have we have kind of checked most of the boxes that we are now executing right we are not trying to discover or doing research as part of uh, once the clock starts ticking on a, on an engagement. Right. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, uh, Chris, as well for all of your answers there. Um, we just want to remind everybody to take advantage of this two-week sprint. Please request a demo with either Expiro or Tamer by July 31st. So the offer is expiring. And if you could go to the next slide, Sanjay. Um, if you have additional questions or would like to get in contact, you can easily reach Brian Thompson from Expiro, the email address there, or Sanjay. And again, we want to thank you all for your time and hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.